Water. We cleanse ourselves in it, drink it, swim in it, and use it in almost every process we have to create almost anything. Without it, we would perish. And yet, not many people know what water is all about and just how interesting it really is. Here, we'll teach you a thing or two about the oh-so-important molecules that make up our life-sustaining liquid. This is Mind Blowing Facts About Water. Mind Blowing Facts About Water. 13. Water is sticky. You may not think so when you spill it and then clean it up, or when you get wet and then don't feel sticky when it dries, but the H2O molecule is known for being especially sticky as it loves to attach itself to things, especially other H2O molecules. The stickiness of water is what makes it have such a large surface tension. The largeness of the surface tension of water allows it to do something especially incredible for humans. It can drag blood upwards through tiny narrow vessels in our bodies, so much so that it can act against the force of gravity. 12. A liquid, not gas. We all know that water is liquid, right? But why? Based on all scientific knowledge, water should exist on our planet as a vapor. It should only exist as a part of our atmosphere, far above our planet's surface, among the other molecules located there. While water vapor is found there, a lot of it actually, it shouldn't also exist as a liquid on our surface. Based on the conditions found at the surface, the light hydrogen and oxygen molecules shouldn't be able to form water as we know it. Instead, it should just float away. Science is yet to explain precisely why H2O isn't a gas, especially when other lighter molecules, such as hydrogen sulfide, H2S, are gases. Even molecules with similar weight, like hydrogen chloride, HCl, and ammonia, NH3, are gases. What's up with water? 11. A solid that floats. Perhaps something even more intriguing than the fact of water existing as a liquid on our planet's surface is the fact that the solid version of it can float on the liquid version. Take, for example, candle wax. If you melted a candle and were left with only the liquid wax, what do you think would happen if you dropped a solid chunk of wax on the surface? It would sink, right? Or what about lava? If you dropped a solid piece of rock on top of a bunch of lava, you wouldn't expect it to sit on top and just hang out, would you? Why does the solid version of water, aka ice, float on top of the liquid version of water? Doesn't make much sense, does it? It has to do with the fact that water expands when we freeze it, causing it to take on a different six-sided crystalline structure, which is less dense than the structure of liquid water. Weird. 10. The Pemba Effect now this is another interesting thing water may do, but keep in mind that it's temperature dependent and scientists are still in disagreement over the parameters that need to be met to produce it. But in essence, the Mapemba effect shows that sometimes hotter water can freeze faster than colder water. Some say it's not possible and that experiments have proven that the effect isn't much of a real thing. However, in 2017, research groups did find some evidence of the Mapemba effect, and they even formulated an inverse Mapemba effect theory showing that sometimes cooler water may be able to get to equilibrium faster than warmer water. Who knows what the future holds for this fascinating idea? 9. Water Content Let's talk about our relationship with water for a minute. You've probably always heard that humans are mostly made up of water, right? While that's true, you've probably heard conflicting or incorrect information, so we're here to confuse the situation even more. As humans age and grow, our water content goes down, and it's at its highest when we're still fetuses. When you're a fetus, you are made up of approximately 95% water, which is actually kind of creepy. By the time a child is born, that percentage has dropped dramatically, and the cute little buggers come out at around 77% water. A one-year-old is about 65% water. Then, as an adult, your water content depends on your body composition, as lean tissue contains more water and fat contains less. But on average, a healthy adult male comes in at around 65% water, whereas a healthy female is roughly 55% water. The more you know. 8. A whole lot of it. You probably already know that about 71% of the Earth's surface is covered in water. But how much water does that really equate to? Well, when you put into consideration that there's water in the oceans, lakes, and rivers, plus there's groundwater and massive amounts of ice, it's a lot. Right now, there's about 332.5 million cubic miles of water on our planet, with roughly 321 million cubic miles of it in our oceans alone. That's enough to fill 800 trillion Olympic-sized swimming pools. Let that sink in. That is a lot of H2O. 
7. Good thing for the continents. We're lucky to have continents with that kind of water just lying around. With the variations in elevation and many other factors, we are able to safely live on land without having to resort to living on boathouses just to stay alive. Let's imagine for a second that the planet had one elevation and was even all the way around. The water on our marble would spread out evenly and would have a depth of roughly 2.29 miles. Not only would our planet closely resemble Neptune, but we would also be living atop a water world, and things would be much, much different. 6. Lacking water Now with all this water talk, one might think that, since we have so much of it, why are people always concerned about it? Well, here's the thing. Most of the water we're talking about is salt water. In fact, about 97% of all the available water on Earth is salty. And as we know, we, nor any of the animals we live among, can survive by drinking salt water. Sure, we can purify it and get the salt out, but if we ever had a real crisis in which everyone needed fresh water at the same time, we'd be in trouble. This hypothetical situation could happen if we depleted all of our fresh water and were left with only salt water to deal with. And guess what? Only about 2.5% of the water sitting around on Earth is fresh water. Thus what we mean when we say that we're kind of lacking water. 5. Not as common as you think. Okay, so water is about as common as you'd think, especially given all the information we just laid out. But did you know that H2O isn't actually the most common molecule in the universe? First place goes to a molecule you can't see. A molecule you're extremely familiar with, even if you don't know about it. H2 is hydrogen gas, and it's the most abundant molecule, followed by water and then oxygen, or simply, Oh, this probably makes some sense when you look at the chemical formula for water, though. H2O is made up of two parts hydrogen and one part oxygen. No wonder. 4. Where there is water, there is life. Why do we get so excited anytime we find ice or the possibility of water on other planets or elsewhere in the solar system? Because here on Earth, where we can find water, we also found forms of life. It doesn't really matter much what the state of the water is. It could be acidic superheated water that we would assume nothing could survive in or around, but that's been proved untrue. Extremophiles are microorganisms that can and do live in or near areas with extreme temperature, acidity, alkalinity, or any other extreme we would assume couldn't sustain any living thing. Anywhere you can think of that houses water, houses some form of life, from the microscopic to the gigantic. And it's because of this reason we get so hyped up about finding H2O elsewhere. This allows us to understand that life is not only more adaptable and capable than we would have ever thought, it also means that the possibility for life existing elsewhere are way better than we could have once imagined. 3. Out in space Now, if we could only figure out a way to access more water, we would never have shortages or crises. It's there, and it's actually quite abundant out in space. There are even whole clouds of water vapor out there in the final frontier. The only problem is that it's so far away. 12 billion light years from Earth, there's a vapor cloud of unimaginable proportions around a quasar which is an active, constantly feeding black hole. This quasar is basically eating the material around it and then producing infrared and x-ray radiation, which, in turn, heats other materials around it. And the result is water vapor. The cloud? It contains enough water to fill all of our oceans 140 trillion times, and it's only growing. 2. Polar Ice we're not talking about the ice at our poles. We're talking about the ice on the poles of other bodies in our own galaxy. Did you know that there is water on the moon? First of all, we detected that there are water molecules in the really thin layer of gases that ride just above the moon's surface. It's also now known that ice is sitting in craters that are in permanent shadows of the moon's poles. And with the North Pole's ice being more widespread, but also more sparse. At the poles, temperatures remain cold enough to keep water frozen, which is the only way it can persist on the satellite. Water couldn't exist as a liquid on the moon, or at least endure for long as one. Also, considering that the moon has no real atmosphere to protect it from the sun's rays, water vapor is quickly decomposed by the rays, and the hydrogen molecules float away into space. There is also ice at the Martian poles, as well as the poles on Mercury. We sure have learned a lot about good old H2O so far, and we still have more excellence to go. But first, we'd like to ask you, what's your favorite thing to do involving water in one of its physical forms? Whether it's something as simple as swimming or as dangerous as ice climbing, let us know in the comments below. 1. The Asteroid Theory There's a theory so incomprehensible that we almost didn't mention it, but it's pretty darn cool, so we had to. There are some who think that our planet could have gotten much of its water from extraplanetary sources. They believe things such as comets, meteoroids rich in water, protoplanets, asteroids, or trans-Neptune objects could have possibly brought water to Earth. 
It is believed that these objects contained water, and, during periods of heavy bombardment of asteroids and the like, they could have brought enough water to give us as much as what we have today. That would take impacts on a massive scale, right? Well, good thing that it really happened, long before humans, of course, and that it makes this theory totally possible. Imagine how long that must have taken. Good thing the planet is 4.5 billion years old, there would have been plenty of time to allow for something like this scenario to occur. If this video taught you anything you didn't know about water, do us a favor and give it a like. Subscribe to our channel below or by clicking our logo right here so that you can always keep up with our excellent uploads. And check out this next video we picked out just for you.